Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to, where today we're going to be looking at the constituents of an atom. Now most of this first part will be a revision from GCSE but then we're going to go on and we're going to introduce a new quantity um, for A level which is called the specific charge. But before we do that we're just going to have a really really quick recap of the constituents of an atom. So you'll remember from both your physics and your chemistry um, GCSE that our model of an atom looks something like this. And it actually consists of three different particles. Um, we have the protons, which are in the middle. So protons, and if you remember, they are particles which are positive. We have neutrons, such as this one here. So they're particles which have zero charge. And going around the outside, we have the electrons, which are a little bit like planets going orbiting around the sun. Um, so these are our electrons, and if you remember, electrons have a negative charge. Now, this table kind of sums up some of the properties of these three particles, proton, neutron, and electron. Um, and when you were at GCSE, you worked in terms of the relative charge and the relative mass. And they're relative simply because they're relative to the proton. Um, so everything at least in this sense, is measured um, and is compared to the proton. So the proton, if you compare it to itself, obviously will have a mass of 1, and it'll also have a charge of 1. And it's positive because we're dealing with a positive particle. If we consider our neutron, however, um, if we look at the mass, well, neutrons and protons have basically the same mass. So if the proton's got a mass of 1, then the neutron also will have a mass of 1. Um, but neutrons are electrically neutral. So whereas the proton's got a ma uh, charge of plus one, the neutron has got a charge of zero because it's a neutral um, particle. The electron, however, is um, it has got an electric charge, um, and it's exactly opposite to the proton. So whereas the proton's got a charge of plus one, the actual number is the same, so it's still one, but because it's opposite, it's got a charge of minus one. In terms of the mass, um, the mass of an electron is much, much less than the mass of a proton. It's approximately um, one two thousandth of a proton, and it's given by this fraction here. So, it's, so this number is obviously much smaller than this number, so electrons, the mass of an electron is much smaller than that of a proton. Now, so these are the numbers you used at GCSE, and there will be times at A-level when we'll also use these. Um, it's more common, however, to use the actual values um, for the charge and for the mass. Now, the mass is the one that's perhaps more straightforward because you've met mass a little bit more than you've met charge before. Uh, so mass is measured in coulombs, and if we were able to find the mass of just one proton, then it's given by this number here. So the mass of one proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Now, a neutron and a proton have essentially the same mass, so if the mass of a proton is given by that number, the mass of a neutron is also given by that number. Electrons, as we, have we, as we have seen, are much lighter. They have a much smaller mass than protons and neutrons. And it's actually given by this number here. So the mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So a very, very small mass, even compared to these two. Now, in terms of charge, charge is measured in, in a quantity called coulombs. Uh, we know that protons and electrons have equal but opposite charge because they both have a relative charge of 1 but one's positive and one's negative. So the proton has a, char has a positive charge, electron's negative, but the actual number in coulombs is given by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So they have the same charge, just opposite. And as we saw before, the neutron has got no charge, so it has a zero charge altogether. So that basically sums up all of the quantities at the moment that we need to know about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Basically, their charge um, in coulombs and their mass in kilograms, and also their relative charge when we compare them to the proton. Now, one of the other things that you needed to know at GCSE was this nuclear notation, and you, were, you should be very familiar with this. Um, just as a really quick reminder, um, these three symbols have their own distinct meaning. So this X here, this tells you what element you've got. So that's your element. Um, if you're dealing with helium, it'll be, for example, HE. If you're dealing with carbon, it'll be a C, and so on. So you could look on your periodic table, it will tell you, and this is your, the actual symbol for, your, for the chemical element that you're looking at. Now, this Z, this is the proton number, and it's actually very straightforward. It basically tells you how many protons you've got in the nucleus of your atom. And this A, this is the mass number. 
and this tells you the number of protons and neutrons altogether. So if you want to know the number of neutrons in this nucleus, for example, you would take the mass number and you would take away the proton number and that the number that is left behind would simply be the number of neutrons in the nucleus of your atom. So again, all of that should be familiar from GCSE. Now one question that comes up quite a lot at A-level um, is the definition of an isotope. So if we bring a separate picture in, um, this here we've now got two um, two different atoms, uh, we could, but they are actually atoms of the same element. We can tell they're atoms of the same element because they've got the same number of protons. This has got three, and that's got three. So if we've got three, if we've got the same number of protons, we have the same element. Um, in this case, it's lithium. So we have two different atoms of lithium, but you can see that we've got four neutrons in this nucleus, but we've only got three here. So, that, so they're actually very slightly different. So although they're the same element, they're, they're different because they've got a different number of neutrons. So we would say that this isotope of lithium is different to this isotope of lithium simply because they've got a different number of neutrons. So this is your definition of an isotope. It's an atom that has the same number of protons. So for example, in this case, three, but it's got a different number of neutrons. So here we've got four and here we've got three. Now, in general, this would be worth two marks in your exam. Um, one mark for saying that it's an atom that has the same number of protons. And the second mark would be for writing down that it has a different number of neutrons. So generally two marks for that. Now, all of this, um, all of this you met at GCSE. So there should really be nothing here, perhaps apart from these numbers. So we're going to look at something new now. We're going to look at something called the specific charge. Now, the specific charge is simply the ratio of the charge of an atom or, or a nucleus or a particle to its mass. And it's something that you can, well, you can work out mathematically, and it's given by this equation here. So if you want to calculate the specific charge, you take the charge, which is in coulombs, so not the relative charge, but, but the charge measured in coulombs and the mass in kilograms. Um, now, so if we do it, if when we do this, we're doing coulombs divided by kilograms, the unit for specific charge is coulombs per kilogram because we're doing coulombs divided by kilogram. So that's our unit of, unit of specific charge. So let's do a very quick example. Let's imagine that we want to find the specific charge of an electron. So the specific charge of an electron is given by this. We need the charge in coulombs. Well, if we look back on our date, data sheet, the charge in coulombs of an electron is given by that, it's negative, and that's the charge on one electron. And we divide it by the mass of an electron. So again, so if you look on your data sheet, you will see that the charge of, sorry, the mass of one electron is given by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And if you do that on your calculator, you get approximately 1.8 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram to two significant figures. Uh, now it's interesting to note that of all of the components, all, all of the different parts of our atom, the electron has got the largest specific charge. So that's often a, a, a question in an exam. So the particle that's got the largest specific charge is an electron, and that's something you can just remember. Okay, so we can also do this with nuclei. So it doesn't just work just for particles like the proton or the electron, but it also works with nuclei. Um, so what we would work, have to do is we'd have to work out the charge, the total charge of the nucleus um, in coulombs and divide it by the total mass in kilograms of the nucleus. Now you might want to have a think about this. So if you want to pause the video and have a think about how you might do this um, and then come back and check. So what we're going to do is we are going to, oh, my pen stopped working. That's better. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to write down the specific charge is equal to the charge in coulombs. Now, if we've got carbon 12, we've got carbon, it has, the atomic mass is 12, uh, but it has six protons altogether. So if we want the charge, the charge comes only from the protons. So we've got six protons and every proton's got a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So the total charge is just six lots of that charge. So we've got six times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. 
However, the mass is given by the, both the protons and the neutrons, and we've got 12 of those altogether. So we've got 12 lots of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, because the mass of one proton or neutron is given by this number here, and we've got 12 of them. So we've simply got 12 lots of that. So if we do this on our calculator, if we do it step by step, the number on the top will be given by 9.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The number on the bottom um, is so 2.004 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. And if we then work that out on our calculator to two significant figures, we get 4.8 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. Like that. So what we've done in this video is we had a very, very quick recap of some of the important parts of um, an atom and looked at some of the properties and defined an isotope. We then looked at a new quantity, which is the specific charge, uh, which is calculated like this. And we looked at two different examples. Um, specific charge is a common thing that comes up in exams and potentially is worth three marks uh, simply for working out something like this. So it's definitely something that you need to kind of get your head around. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.